On October 4th, 2012, the official Clash of Clans Facebook page congratulated a player named the True King for being the first player to reach 3,000 trophies. This was at a time when the community was beginning to grow rapidly, so he became well known for his achievement, and soon after, the race to 4,000 began. But it wouldn't be long before someone made it there, as in January 28th, 2013, Jorge Yao was congratulated for reaching 4,000 trophies, and in the process becoming a bit of a virtual celebrity in the Clash community. However, people were quick to question the legitimacy of this milestone, especially how he had maintained his number one position for months, something that was previously unheard of. What exactly was Jorge Yao doing that everyone else wasn't. Today, we're going to be diving into the history of cheating in Clash of Clans. This includes the story of the leaderboards, including Jorge Yao's methods, the rise and fall of mods, and exploits that were used throughout Clash's history. The very first form of cheating was to simply never stop playing. <laughs> If your village is currently online, you can't get attacked, and back in the day, there was no such thing as a personal break. Theoretically, you could stay online forever. It's unknown how many players in the leaderboards actually used this method at the time, but we do know that it was pretty dang popular. Jorge Yao was interviewed by the New York Times in December 2013 after he retired from Clash, and he explained that in order to keep your trophy count high, a player has to avoid getting attacked by other top contenders by either staying online or being attacked for a shield. He then revealed that in the weekends, he would never go offline. His device was with him the entire day, either to keep it awake or clouding looking for any base to attack. Obviously, Jorge wasn't the only one doing this. Players had come up with many unique ways to keep their device awake without having to be there, like putting fruits on their device because it would trick the screen into thinking there was something touching it, building robots that tap the screen with a stylus, and even jailbreaking their devices to download softwares that could do it for them. More on that later. If you were one of the players that constantly logged off, getting attacked and losing trophies, you know, playing Clash as it was meant to be, <laughs> you would have unfortunately never got anywhere near players that were always online. In May 2013, a personal break feature was implemented to enforce players to go offline for a short period of time. However, this could easily be bypassed with mods at the time, and it wouldn't be until early 2014 where this feature actually worked as intended. But this wasn't the only method being used to cheat back then. By late 2012, players were already perfecting the act of win trading. If you're unfamiliar with the term win trading, specifically in gaming, it's basically where one player agrees to lose in a ranked match to boost another player. Jorge Yao, as well as other top players at the time, used a form of win trading where they would leave their clan before going offline. In doing so, the chances of one of their clanmates finding them in matchmaking was very high, especially at such high trophies. They would come to an agreement that if they found one another in matchmaking, they would only destroy the bare minimum of the base to obtain a 12 hour shield. Back then, this would have been at 40% destruction with or without a star. Depending on the agreement they had, they would have either got 40% and failed the attack, giving free trophies to the defender, or got a 40% 1 star and surrendered right before the 2 star. That way they take less trophies from their clanmates. Whatever method they chose to use would have gave them a 12 hour shield and helped both of them stay at the top of the leaderboards. But sometimes hoping a clanmate finds their base in matchmaking wasn't enough. And it didn't always work either. So to keep reaching new milestones, players like Jorge Yao discovered a new way of win trading attacking yourself. Players in the leaderboard only got offline for one reason, to tend to their life. You can't be on the damn game 24-7. I mean, I guess you could, but the reality was people had lives. That's when Jorge realized that if he took over someone else's account during the time that they would have normally had a shield, he could use that account to win trade by himself. One thing led to another, and eventually he was managing multiple leaderboard accounts in order to help his main account reach new heights. Playing as much as five iPads at once, and even taking them to the shower covered in plastic bags. Many players would eventually use these same methods, even years later after the shield changes. However, win trading would eventually change as a whole after the Legends League rework in 2019. But before we skip all the way to 2019, I wanted to move away from win trading for a bit and take a look at other forms of cheating in Clash of Clans in those early days. 
If you were playing between 2013 and 2016, you're most likely familiar with Clash of Clans mods that required you to jailbreak or root your device. The two big players in the scene were iMod and Xmod. I'm only going to be talking about these two because for one, they're the most popular and well known and two, it seems they're no longer around and I much rather talk about something that happened in the past rather than accidentally promote something that's still available. iMod and Xmod were basically tools that assisted you in Clash of Clans. You couldn't spawn a thousand dragons on someone's base or get unlimited gems. It wasn't that kind of mod. But think of it as having extra settings that you definitely weren't supposed to have. <laughs> For example, you could copy a base layout before that was an official feature, or as we mentioned earlier, a toggle to keep your base active. However, the capabilities of these mods were way beyond that. And over time, they just kept getting better. Firstly, it was a major help for farming because you could set loot parameters. So let's say you set it to 200k gold or elixir. The mod would search and skip for you until it found a base with 200k gold, elixir, or both. It could do this for dark elixir, town halls, levels, pretty much everything. The second main reason these mods were used was because of their sandboxing feature, a feature that let you visit any base and practice attacking it, even having a toggle that allowed you to see the traps. This became a massive problem in both the leaderboard and client wars because all of a sudden, players using this mod could practice their attacks before actually doing it. This led to many clan wars where everyone was getting perfect 3 stars and over in the leaderboards, because you usually run into the same bases up there, top players were practicing on each other's bases so they can do good next time they find them. It basically eliminated the need to strategize your attacks. These mods were highly controversial because a lot of players using these mods argued that it wasn't cheating and that it simply helped them enjoy the game in between their busy lives. But at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> mods are mods, and anything that gave anyone an advantage is cheating. In April 2016, Supercell finally did something about it and committed to keeping Clash of Clans a level playing field for everyone. They started to issue two week bans to anyone who was caught utilizing any third party app. But after multiple ban waves throughout 2016, it seems many players still weren't getting the message. And so they started to issue permanent bans to everyone in the fall of 2016. There were attempts from Xmod and iMod to dodge these detection methods Supercell had put in place. However, the more discreet these mods became, the more effort Supercell put into putting an end to it. There was a bit of a resurgence in 2017, specifically in Clan War Leagues, but by then, Supercell was not messing around. After a few ban waves, thousands of accounts were banned, and this kind of scared people away from doing so. Eventually, players realized that there was no way of guaranteeing that you wouldn't be banned. In the end, these mods began to slowly disappear. Today, it seems they're non-existent, and if you find an alternative, there's a very good chance you'll be banned sooner or later, so yeah, I don't recommend it. As mentioned a minute ago, mods were used to practice war attacks, and this made clan wars feel less about strategy and more about who had mods installed. But there was also a way of doing this without the mods. Ghosting. A way of attacking a base and tricking the game into thinking that you actually weren't attacking it, so it wouldn't count the attack. The exact method was simple and easy to do. You would hit attack on any base, and during the 30 second window the game gave you to spectate, you would set your device to airplane mode. And then, you could do anything you wanted, check the location of traps, see what's in the clan castle, practice your attack. None of it counted because the game just assumed you weren't there. To anyone who was viewing the war screen, it would sort of just look like an attack was going on, but then suddenly stopped after 3 minutes. All of this was possible because between April 2014 and April 2015, you could back out of any attack as long as you didn't drop a troop, much like you can do in regular multiplayer. On April 30th, 2015, you could no longer do this. Backing out would now count as a surrender, so there were a lot of screenshots floating around of people getting 0%. Kind of funny, not gonna lie. <laughs> this wasn't the end of cheating in wars as mods were still around in 2015, but it was at least a step in the right direction. However, the topic of ghosting would appear again all the way in 2019. Apparently, leaderboard players had figured out another method of doing so. 
But it was never revealed how exactly, and I couldn't find any information about it either. It was quickly patched and multiple accounts were banned and that's all we know. If you had a lot of trophies in the year 2014, you might have come across an exploit that was plaguing the leaderboards. A lot of players were reporting that they would get a client and server out of sync error after only dropping one troop on certain bases. This would cause an automatic 0%, 0 stars, and players affected lost their hard earned trophies in the process. One of those players who encountered this error was me. <laughs> I happened to be pushing at the time as well, and for the two people who are curious, I believe I peaked at number 6 in the US, but I only have this picture. Anyways, sorry, getting a bit off topic. I vividly remember losing tons of trophies because of this error message. At the time, it was believed it was either a server bug or that those players were using Xmod. However, it turns out it was neither of those. Instead, it seems some players figured out a way to bug their base, and so when someone attacked them, the game would realize that something was wrong with their base. A Reddit post from mid-2014 has some proof of this. Here's a base that someone found that was missing a wizard tower, and as soon as they dropped troops, the error message appeared. But upon visiting their base later that day, the wizard tower was back in its place. No one knows how they were managing to unplace defenses and bug their base, and unfortunately we never got the answer to that. The bug was eventually fixed and it was all forgotten about. The players who had abused this exploit and gained tons of trophies from defenses just moved along like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Meanwhile, tons of players who were affected by this exploit ended up quitting their journey to be the next number one player. Earlier we discussed the topic of old school win trading, but ever since the Legends League rework, this method of cheating has evolved, because in Legends League you cannot lose trophies from attacking, so how would you give trophies to someone else? Well, the main method of win trading was to make an agreement with your friends to never get more than one star when they run into each other. That way those involved lost minimal trophies from defense, but won a lot on offense. This basically allowed those players to gain trophies faster than anybody else doing it legitimately. In 2019, a couple by the name Stephanie and Dr. Mushtaba broke two trophy records within the span of four months by using this method of win trading. But not only that, they had figured out how to do ghost attacks and a couple of other things. Man, they really wanted that number one spot. Had. As mentioned earlier, we don't know how exactly they did the whole ghosting thing, but we do know that the couple was paying their way to the leaderboards. Literally. Apparently they would pay random ass players in the leaderboards $1500 to change their name to something stupid like Stephanie Hart Mustaba, <laughs> or some silly variation of the same name. In doing so, this confused Supercell in determining who to ban for all this win trading that was going on. But it also allowed their name to be plastered all throughout the leaderboards. Eventually, Supercell started to hand out bans for win trading and the ghosting exploit. However, they still had dozens of accounts in the leaderboards throughout 2020 and I believe 2021 because they could simply make new accounts, buy some, or pay someone to change their name. Fast forward to today, their names are a thing of the past, but it's believed that win trading is still a widespread issue in the leaderboards, clan wars, and even the clan capital. <laughs> Who the hell want to do that? The developers have gotten better in determining who is doing it, but it's hard to know for sure sometimes. And it's just something that happens in games. The fact is, wherever there is competition, there will always be cheating. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I had tons of fun researching and writing this one. I even learned a couple things myself here and there. I'm sure there have probably been a few more niche ways of cheating in Clash, but these are basically all of the biggest and most prevalent forms of cheating that the game has seen. Anyways, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming outs. Peace!